Hey, Assalamualaikum guys, how's everyone doing? Uh, so yeah, as promised, I am going to be putting up a series of interviews that I've done with uh, the trainers here and the teachers here that are actually at this HypnoThoughts conference. Uh, and I'm going to start with James Tripp. James is, um, I really like him a lot, uh, to say the least, uh, especially because I really resonate with you know, his understanding and his concept with what hypnosis really is. And, uh, you know, it's similar with even my teachers like Mike Mandel and Kevin Lee and Carl Smith and the stuff I've learned from NLP, which is Hugh Comerford. Um, it really speaks to the fact that, you know, hypnosis is nothing like what we might think it is. And really, it's kind of like this state of extreme attention, extreme absorption uh, that we get ourselves into. And really, when it comes to, you know, the kind of work that I do and even James, what he does, uh, that change work in helping people kind of take control of their behaviors and what they believe to be true, um, he, he, he really challenges that, that, you know, we tell ourselves uh, these stories and those become our own internal trances. So we're going to kind of get into all of that um, in this little short chat. But um, this is my first time doing this, you know, just a quick note that in terms of the audio, I, I, I only had the one mic set, so I gave him the mic. I figured uh, it's more important to clearly hear what he has to say. Uh, and so some of my dialogue, which doesn't really import, <laughs> matter that much, uh, at least in these videos, um, it, doesn't, it, it perhaps may not come across as clearly. But other than that, let's get right into it. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. How is everyone doing? Today I have, well for this video, I've got James Tripp with me. Um, I especially like James because he, I really resonate with the way he approaches hypnosis. Actually, he identifies as the man who creates hypnosis without trance. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of wanted to ask you to expand a bit more on that. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And um, first, talk about I guess yourself. I mean, you're based out of the UK. Yeah, I'm based out of the UK. Uh, although I spend a lot of time traveling. This last year, I've been all over the world running trainings, uh, which is great and can be quite tiring as well. But you know, it's pretty good. Here in Las Vegas right now, having a good time. And um, yeah, teaching hypnosis. I work with people, work with clients. Uh, post-traumatic stress, there were a lot of stuff around that. Yeah. That's a big area for me. You've been doing this for a while as well. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I've been an independent change work practitioner for uh, a little over 10 years, about 12 years now. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. And there's a lot of videos on you on YouTube doing for street sure. work. There and, is. Yeah, having a lot of fun that way as well. Yeah, street hypnosis was a big thing I did uh, going back quite a while now. I don't do so much now, but sure. uh, it's it was, a, it was a really great environment to develop skills and figure a lot of stuff out so yeah. and yeah. you got some pretty interesting results people doing some sort of hypno you know what we you and i would call hypnotic phenomena yeah but having these experiences which otherwise we don't think are necessarily possible right and that kind of loops into yeah for sure i mean that's the one of the things i mean my thing is hypnosis without trance because there's this popular idea the classic model of hypnosis is this special state that renders people uniquely open to suggestion where these weird things can happen. You put people in the special state, when they're there, they receive the suggestions and then things can happen. Yes. Um, but from my experience doing street hypnosis, that didn't seem to be true. Uh, you could get all the things happening without doing the bit with the special state first uh, and just going directly for the uh, experiences that you want. And this got me looking at how we work as human beings, how we work neurologically, cognitively, this kind of thing. And just looking at a different model for hypnosis and thinking, you know, what, what is it that's really going on here? What would be an explanation that's a better fit for what seems to be happening in these situations? Okay, all right. And you were, you know, I attended, uh, I attended one of your workshops. Yeah. Um, and you were essentially speaking about how really it's almost as if we're always in one form of trance. Right. Or I mean, according to even this right now, you yeah. and I are engaged in this hypnotic trance of yeah, emotions yeah. and dialogue and yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's the way I've come to see it across time is people think all the time they fall for this sort of cognitive bias of how I see things is how they are mm -hmm. but how you see things is how you see things how you experience things is how you experience things it's not actually how it is um, so you know one person might experience somebody in a particular way somebody else would experience them a different way uh, the example I often give is you imagine I'm from the UK, so I'm going to talk about soccer. 
Yeah. You imagine two people who are on a, on a soccer terrace. They're watching a soccer match. Somewhere in the north of England, it's raining, right? Yeah. Because it does in yeah. England. Yeah. Um, and let's say they're called Bob and Phil, right? And Bob is there. He's on the football terrace. He loves football. He loves soccer. Mm-hmm. So he's just totally there. Every, every shift that's happening in the game, he's on the edge of his seat. His emotions are up and down, but he's feeling the exhilaration, the roar of the crowd. is is like, oh, just electrifying for him yeah and for Bob there is nowhere on earth he would rather be but one foot away there's Phil and and Phil's not into soccer at all and he's just looking at these people and they're running around they're kicking this ball about it's like what the hell are they doing these idiots and they got how much do they get paid for doing this this is nuts you know and it's raining and the crowd and it's horrible and ah uh, and and for Phil there is nowhere on earth he would rather not be so they're like one foot apart in the same place, but in terms of their experience, they're a million miles apart. Yeah. Because they're in different trances around what's happening. So they experience what's happening in a completely different way. So as we go through life, we're shifting through different trances, experiencing things in different ways. Um, and if the way we're experiencing something isn't useful for us, it's not serving us, it's taking us away from our life goals, being at our best, being fulfilled, um, what we can do with formal hypnosis mm-hmm. is we can literally shift how people experience things. So they can come to experience them in different ways that are more useful for them. Yeah. So that's my view on, on hypnosis, everyday trance, and the formal trances that we do in, in hypnotic work. In what we do, yeah. yeah. I especially, you know, even in your example, it has nothing to do with the, the actual game or the circumstances right. or the environment. It's essentially, you know, Bob's internal representation of what he believes to be true. Yep, absolutely. Bill's internal representation of what he believes to be true. Yeah. I especially like the example that you give that often, uh, you know, when you have clients come in. So, for example, if I was a client of yours and I came in and I said, James, you know what? There's this job opportunity at work. Uh huh. You know, something relevant that I'm sure, you know, we all kind of go through this yeah, or yeah. something similar. So, I have this job opportunity at work. But the reality is, is I just don't have the confidence. Right. I just right. don't have the ability to do this. Yeah. And, and what you said was so beautiful. You would say something like, I'm sure you believe that to be true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, so speak about that. So I've, I've, that that's gold. Yeah, I want, I want to start seeding this idea. I want to get people to get to be skeptical about their own experience. Yes. People say, I have this job opportunity. I just don't, I don't have the confidence. I'm, you know, I, I don't feel ready. And I'm likely to say something along the lines of, and I bet that really seems true, doesn't it? Because the thing about these trances, these everyday trances that we're in, is they do, they seem true, they seem real. Yeah. Going back to the experience of Bob and Phil, Bob is sure that this is the greatest moment ever. You know, he's sure of it, it really seems true. And, and Phil is sure that this is hell on earth and it really seems true. You know, so if you get, um, a lot of the time, all, all of these trances contain, they, they contain understandings and information about the world as we understand it and the stuff we think about ourselves and how we consider ourselves. So in the, op- in the situation where somebody might not be going for a job, underneath of the trance of no confidence, let's call it, yeah. there's going to be some kind of story about, um, I'm not the kind of person that can handle this, I think I'll screw it up, they're going to want to go for somebody else, all of this kind of thing. If they had a story underneath of that about themselves of, yeah, I could do that, I could do great at that, they have an entirely different experience. And, and this taps into how we do life, because one person's gonna hold back mm-hmm. and go, well, maybe I'll, I'll be ready next year when I've got more experience. And the other person's just gonna go boom and go forward for it. So the trances that we live through dictate how we engage with the world. And this is a huge thing. A lot of the time people wanna change the results they get in life by changing what they do without changing the trances they're trying to do that from. And that ends up being a problem because if somebody doesn't think that they can, if they haven't got that trance that says, yeah, I can do that, they're going, I'm not sure if I can, but I'm going to force myself to, uh, it's not going to be the same as if they just go, right, boom, I'm going to go do that. So in my view, even with the coaching work that I do, where people show up, they're wanting to build businesses, they're wanting to create things in the world. I'm looking at assisting them in being who they need to be to create that. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is having the trance repertoire in place that's going to have the actions emerge that get the results they want. So everything is congruent, everything is aligned. They're not struggling with themselves, not struggling with self-image, not struggling with beliefs that are not helpful about the world and this kind of thing. Okay. So that's a huge part of how I approach yeah. um, 
both the change work and the coaching that okay. I do. So almost even giving them the choices to kind of write the trance, create the trance that they want. Right, the absolutely, that would be yeah. Beneficial for them. Right, right, absolutely. So right. In, in a coaching context, I'm going to say, you know, what is it that you want? to do, yes. what is it that you want to get? And, and a lot of the time people know what they should do. People say, I know what I should do, I'm just not doing it. Yes. That's yeah. because they have the information about the doing, but they don't have the, the trances in place that that doing is going to naturally come from. So I want to backtrack and get them in, to the place of, well, who is it that you need to be? How is it that you would need to be? Yes. What is it that you would be believing was true that would have you just do that? And start to build this kind of stuff up. Uh, and that, that works really well for people. Yeah. And I, you know, you, you gave such a simple but very powerful, almost metaphor of essentially it's two steps: get them to wake up from their existing trance, yeah. and then create the trances that are actual beneficial for right. them. Right. Yeah. You can just kind of expand. For sure. For me, there's two sides to this. There's the uh, the trances that we're living our lives through. Yeah. And and the the thing about these trances is they don't seem like trances. They seem like facts about the world. Seem they seem like, like reality. Oh, this is real. This right. Is, this is yeah, this is it. This you is true, know. Yeah. Um, so somebody might say, oh, I'm really struggling at work, and that really seems true. There's that line again, it really seems true. Um, so instead of just trying to push something new in on top, which probably doesn't seem true, the new trance isn't going to seem true to start with, the first step is to get people to understand the nature of their experience. So they go, hang on a second, this isn't the way it is. This is just the way I'm experiencing it. So this idea I have, this thought that I cannot handle this situation, for example, isn't a thought, it isn't a fact, it's a thought. It's an idea, it's not a fact that's true about the world. Yeah. Um, and this is the thing, so we live through our ideas, we don't live through facts, but we always think those, fact, those ideas are facts. It's a trap that we fall for. Yeah. So I want to get people to wake up and go, oh wow. Kind of you wake know, up from their trap. We yeah. Wake up from, yeah. from the trap, wake up from the trance. Uh, and then when they go, oh, okay, so I can see that's not how it is. That's just how I've been doing it from the inside out. Yeah. That can fall away. And then there's the second question. So what would be the ideal way of being, the ideal state that I can be in that's going to serve me and getting the result that I want there? And then you can build something new. So that's, that's how I do my approach to self-hypnosis. Yeah, yeah. Um, personal uh, and, change and, work. And that's exactly it. I mean, all change work, even for myself and the clients that come in, that's essentially what I'm giving them the ability to do is to kind of take and get access to the states that most of the time they already know how to do, mm. right? But give yeah. them actual access so that it becomes natural for them, as natural right. as it is, right. you know, how we breathe and everything like that. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Uh, you know, I promise this will be a 10 minute yeah. thing. I really appreciate it. I know you're very, very busy. Yeah. Uh, where can people learn more about you or find you? I mean, Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Um, just look for James Tripp on Facebook. There's a Californian comedian with the same name. I'm not that guy. <laughs> um, I have, uh, for people who are interested in coaching, I have jamestripp.co.uk. That's my UK coaching Perfect. site, but I do online coaching. Uh, but if people are interested in learning hypnosis, my main website for that is www.hypnosiswithouttrance.com. And uh, you can check out my YouTube channel, which is Chaos Wave. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I won't give you my Instagram. <laughs> I'll save that one. Yeah, no, fair enough. And what yeah. I'll do is I'll take all of these links and I'll, uh, I'll put them into the comments. And I guess really for me is, you know, uh, I'm sure that this was very beneficial, but perhaps begin to ask yourself, what are and where are the trances that you believe to be true that you're living? Which trances are useful? which chances are not useful and perhaps do something um, get in touch with James get in touch with myself we're, we're here to help uh, do something to create the chances that are actually benefiting you in living the life that you guys want to be all right take care guys thank you appreciate it thank you thank you